Hi, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop with the first video in the homemade rotary phase converter series. Please make sure to follow all your local uh, and state electrical codes as far as wire sizes, fuses, uh, conduit, and all that. If you are not comfortable around electricity, please hire a professional or get a professional's advice. If you are not comfortable or have the slightest doubt around electricity, don't take the chance. Bring someone in, okay? Um, these videos will be for entertainment purposes only. Um, I'm not showing you, you know, I'm going to show you how to do stuff, but it's a way to build your own rotary face converter and get you going. So make sure you are safe. Electricity is dangerous. You know, it's not a thing just to rig to get machines going. Safety first. Pay attention to wire sizes, fuses, grounding, and everything. You know, machining is fun. Let's keep it fun by keeping it safe. So I'll get you over to the uh, motor and the fuse panel, and we'll get this series started. Okay, so the first thing we need is a three-phase motor. This is the motor I'll be using for these first two videos. This is a five-horse at a 230 volt. This will be the uh, motor we use. Voltage, I mean, uh, voltage will be set by, you wanna make sure you get one that's in the range you can supply. A lot of uh, three-phase motors are 220 or 440 so you want to get 221 if that's the service you have so make sure you wire it to the uh low volt i haven't wired this one yet and the basis of what you're going to do you're going to bring wire two hot wires down from your panel okay you're going to wire it for the voltage and then, as you know, you'll have three other connections. One of the hots from the panel will go to one. Like on this motor. See these lines here? Nine and three, eight and two, seven and one. One hot I'll bring down to nine and three and hook it up. The other hot I'll bring to eight and two and bring it up. And then the one to seven will be the generated leg. So there'll be two wires coming in and then there'll be three wires going out plus a ground wire, but three power wires going out. So at some point, you have to bring them together. Now this stuff's all open and everything. It's normally closed. It's open for this demonstration and the, just to show you. So this is my incoming from my breaker panel. It's black. Right here is coming in. Another wire is going into the three phase breaker panel. And this empty hole here will be a wire I run down to the motor. Same with the red. One hot coming in from the main breaker. This one going down into this guy. And then we'll run the lead down to there. Now this white one is the generated leg. This wire goes down and comes around, comes into the breaker panel, the three phase breaker panel. And we'll bring a wire up through this place here from the uh, phase convert from the motor. And that'll create the generated leg. Bring a ground wire, tie everything in with grounds. You'll go that clip right there. I highly recommend running it through a, your stuff through a phase panel. I have seen people run it directly from this motor to another motor. I like to fuse everything. You want to fuse everything. You want your fuses to protect the motor and the wire you use. This motor draws 12 amps. So, you wouldn't necessarily want to run number six wire to that with a 50 amp breaker because electrical damage could happen to the motor before it trips the breaker. 
size stuff appropriately and safely. You just, I can't stress that enough. I've seen a lot of motors burned up and stuff because everyone thinks you have to run six or four, number four wire or whatever. You want things protected. You want the breaker to trip if anything happens. That way the wire's safe, the motor's safe, the breaker's trip, the power's cut off, everything is safe. So beyond the breaker that comes supplies to this, then the outgoing power goes through another breaker rated. This breaker happens to run to, I don't run wire machines directly into it. It goes to outlets. And each outlet has its own breaker. Typically for the machines I have, they're 20 amp three phase breakers. Again, size the output breakers and wire to what you're gonna power. You want to, you always want breakers to trip and stuff not to fry. That's so important. And ground everything, absolutely everything. Um, beyond that, obviously with two phases on here, this motor will not spin. It will, most motors will hum because it doesn't have the field it needs to begin it spinning. So you'll have to find a way to spin that. In the next video, we'll go, go over a couple ways to do that. This video is just the very initial uh, setup. When you run your wire from the motor, don't just stick this stuff through here and run bare wires up the stuff. Follow electrical codes, put stuff in, you know, flexible conduit if you're allowed to. Make sure, this is on cart for now, make sure it's solidly wherever it is. Be very, very mindful. This will be on the floor or in a on a platform of some kind. That shaft is going to be spinning the whole time this motor is generating power. Be mindful of that. I like to make uh, metal guards that a lot of the time they use between pumps and motors and the waterworks. Make sure nothing can come in contact with that when it's spinning. Just it's a, something to always pay attention to. Um, again, you want to try to get the highest quality motor you can get for your uh, your generator. Um, these inverter duties work good. Uh, older motors seem to work a little bit better. I think that's because the horsepower rating on older motors is a little more accurate for their you know standard running. I know a bunch of electricians, and not so much Baldor or some of the other, you know, uh, newer motors. Some of the motors, you know, they say they're six or seven horse, but they're that might be for the fraction of a second at peak performance or something like that. They just seem to work better. What doesn't really work, even though you think they would, like, and, well, I've had no luck with them. It's like those five horse special rating motors, like for air compressors that are really small. Even though they're three phase, I mean, some of those motors are, you know, half the size of this one. And they just don't seem to work very well. So get a, get a good quality motor as your starting point. Uh, again, auctions, Craigslist, stuff like that. You know, make sure the, you know, oh, it runs nice and quiet. You know, there's no noise in it whatsoever. Shaft doesn't matter. It's nice to, of course, get a motor that has a base. It's for setting everything up. So you're gonna hook your stuff up. You're gonna figure out your wiring, hook it all up securely, ground it, run a ground up, everything grounded. I say that because I've seen some really bad hookups where people will literally open the fuse panel, hook a wire into a 220 volt thing, and run it directly out with no covers or nothing. Do not do that. Safety first, it's electricity. So, really all you need is a 220 circuit, a 220 volt three phase motor, and the stuff to run it to however you're gonna hook it up to a machine. I highly recommend 
getting a three-phase panel with breakers in it. I very, very highly recommend that. And then I have, I'd like to have a lockable shutoff. This is after the breaker panel. This way I can shut it off, put a padlock in there. That way, there's no way this can be activated. No way any power can get past that and the padlock secures it. So, again, safety. We're, you know, we're trying to do this as cost effective as possible, but cost never overcomes safety. Do it right, do it safe. You know, again, I stress that stuff, especially when it comes to, you know, the shaft and all that. So this is the uh, first video in the series. In the next video, we're gonna hook this guy up. And I'll show you that. We're gonna do three, two or three different ways to get it started. This will be the easy ones. I don't recommend the ones coming up. They work, and if you're careful around them, they're safe. We use basically the Flintstone mes method, the pull start method, and the pony motor. Of all those, I prefer the pony motor. We'll get to that in the next video. So yeah, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.